Welcome back to the TLS. We are going on to game number two in this second semi-final match between Julia and Arc Neon. The second map is going to be match point, as you can see. The site of many a famous ZVP. Uh, in particular, the legendary Jadon vs. Sork match. It was like an hour long. Seriously, if anyone actually hasn't seen that, at least go and look at the gif of like Jadong at the end of the game. Because he is literally just pouring sweat down his face. It was so amazing. Like, the concentration it took to play that game. I don't think I've ever seen Jadon so flustered. Um, it was it was really cool. Anyway, we're going to have Julia versus Arkeon. I mean, it's basically like Jadon and Stork, right? I mean, it's, yeah, they're, they're pro gamers for sure. Game time. Alright, here we go. Game number two. At the bottom left as the Teal Zerg, we do have Jadong at the top right. As the blue, Pro the blue Protoss, the handsomest Protoss, it is Stork. Here on match point. Match point was indeed correct. You have picked the right map. Well done, sir. If you go if it goes to a third game, it will be on Finding Spirit. Yeah. Man, I need some grapes. I'm hungry. Mmm, grapes. I bought like a whole big bunch of them just for today. Mmm. Okay, what's going on here? Making a pile on it the natural? A little bit late. A little bit late. A little bit. Whoa, what's, what's that? What's up with that? Uh, alright. Well, actually, I guess that's fine. It's like Forge Gateway, something like that. Forge Gateway. Yeah, that's legit. That's legit. And the funny thing about this is, so you know, on a lot of maps where you do like the Forge Gateway wall, like it's completely tight with only one gap, you later on have to kill your pylon to get out. But on this on match point, because there's a mineral patch here, you can just mine this out, and then you can move out later on anyway. Yeah. So using the Gateway first, Forge expand, or. Wait, the lot? That didn't make any sense. He's in the gateway first expand, but he'll do gateway, forge, and cannon, and nexus in various orders, depending on what he scouts from the Zerg player. I actually wasn't aware that you could do this on match point, because I think when match point was still being used in the scene, um, this gateway expand wasn't even really popularized yet. I don't want to say invented. I was going to say not invented yet, but <clears throat> there are so many cases of, you know, random builds being like, oh, well, you know, this guy used it once many years before it became popular. It's like, you know, the quote-unquote Bisu build, which I don't even know what it is, because apparently nobody can agree on what exactly the Bisu build is. Like, there's some, some you know, Bisu elitists who think everyone else is crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so basically, you know, the Forge Fast Expand thing was not, in fact, invented by Bisu. It was, like, used quite a while before him, but he's the one who popularized it, of course. So, well, I was going to be careful what I say, or else the, uh, the Brutal Elitists, you know, in, ca in, in case you didn't think Brutal peeps were elitist enough. There's a there's actually multiple tiers of elitism within Brutal, you know. It's like you know you got the regular Brutal fans, and then you got like the super hardcore peeps who are like, "That's not the Bisu build. Stop saying Corsair DT is the Bisu build." Rah! Man, it's pretty scary. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so what what's happening in this game anyway? All right, so we got some links coming out. That's that's pretty exciting. The natural hatcher got blocked, so he built an off hatch uh, at his natural anyway, which means he's not going to get a third hatchery at his third base really quickly. So he's kind of been forced into a little bit of an awkward situation. I'm not sure if this was part of his original plan or not. But depending on what strategy he goes for, it might not necessarily make a difference. Oh no! Oh balls! It's not tight! Oh my god! Okay, so it looks like you can't do this on this map either because in order for the gateway expand to work, this has to be tight. This has to be the only gap that Zerglings can pass through. Oh my god, no wonder nobody does this build on this map. 
Oh, it doesn't actually work! It doesn't work! Alright, so uh, fortunately for him at least, it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, he has killed all the Zerglings now, and he's blocking up with the probe. <laughs> oh, this is the worst. And you're like, ha, I made this fancy wall, and it's, it's not tight. So what's the follow-up? Is he... he's not making another hatch somewhere. Are you just gonna Hydra bust him? Hydra action? Match point's a pretty good map for Hydra busting. Got a lot of space here. A lot of space for the Hydras. It's all flat. No? Made more links. Alright, I don't know. Apparently not. Whatevs. So, we got the core on the way. And we have a lair on the way as well. But still no third base. Is he just gonna muta again? Could very well muta again. But whatever he does, he's gonna have to do some damage here if he's not gonna go for the fast third. As the Protoss will be on two base against his two base, which is good for Protoss. <clears throat> so we have six things remade here. I'm not really sure why he remade all six. I think it would have been better just to remake two, just to leave one out here and have one like chasing a scouting probe. I don't think you really need six after that. Um, because, you know, Archangel's definitely going to be blocking more carefully this time. You can see yeah, he's blocked it well. The two Zells, still only one cannon, but that's fine. Um, Julia does see the core is. Sorry, the, the forge is spinning. So he knows plus one is, is on the way here. And oh, look at this, no Stargate. No Stargate. It is, in fact, just a Citadel. Did he make a fake Stargate, or is it just straight Citadel? He's made it right at the top of the main as well, so it's a little bit difficult for this Overlord to actually go and see it, especially if he makes a Dragoon now. He's actually making only cells, uh, because of course he doesn't want to waste any production time on that gateway. But uh, but I think if he made a Dragoon, he might possibly have been able to kill this before it saw the lack of Stargate, but in this case, it is all going to be scouted. And this is going to be quite interesting, because this drone, you can see, going to the top left to make a third, but because that's so late, I don't think Julia will have any time to build uh, static defenses there in order to defend the base against speed lords. Because normally the best defense against speed lords is a good Sim City with a couple of summons behind. But because this is so late, I mean, you know, it's barely going to be finished by the time the speed lords are, are, are attacking it. Uh, it might even be done by that time. So I think that third base is going to be very vulnerable. In fact, uh, Archeon already putting on some pressure with the initial four slow lots against Julia, although something does finish, he might try and run through. Oh man, is he gonna go for the run by? Oh god, that's not gonna work. Oh man, I don't think that was a good idea. I mean, Julia saw it coming, he was gonna have to be prepared. Really, this should have been a pressure move and then just pull back, because he's just lost four Zealots while going plus one speed lot. Which is just such a huge waste, I mean, they would be so much more effective later on, but now, when his, uh, his actual speed lot attack moves out, it's gonna be really, really weak. That seems quite bad to me. Mm, not a fan of that move. Not a fan at all. Oh well. Looks like uh, Arkney, I'm going to see this third base. Not too much you can do about it. Poke it a little bit, but uh, the Lynx should be able to deal with it. Interestingly, there's no speed uh, yet for the Zergling. Wow, look at that. Just now started, in fact. Uh, is he making mutas? Oh god. Oh god. No anti air. Oh man, the panic cannons! Panic cannons! Oh shit! He does. He's gonna make an Archon. No, he's making DTs. He's not even gonna have an Archon. He's making two DTs. He's making cannons everywhere. But good Muta Micro here can just kill all the probes anyway. The cannons will do nothing. They do nothing. This L though is doing a good job. And oh no. Oh crap. This is this is the oh crap moment as Protoss. Oh man. Oh god, at least he's got like, oh man, he's making more cannons, he's making five cannons in the main, because he's got to predict the gateways. He, he, he realized, he's like, wait, these cannons predict the middle of the line, but now if I try to make an arc on, the videos will kill the Templar before they come out, or before they warp. I think they still will, actually, if he focuses it down, even with the cannons there, he can pick it off. Oh, this is bad, bad news bears, he's going to try and run DTs in, there's only, there's only one sunken, there's a bunch of Hydras though, can he run in? He's also here though. He's killing the hatchery. He might actually get the hatchery. It doesn't look like Julia particularly cares since he's killed, you know, the entire economy. But uh, an Archon is actually going to live somehow. So I guess 
Like, this is an Arkham comes out. Oh, a DT ran through! Somehow, a DT has run into the main base. Unfortunately for him, there's already a, an Overlord there. Wow, a great drone stack as well. Alright, so he killed a drone. That was not nearly as effective as he should have been. Oh! Oh, he wasn't paying attention to the Mutas, though! The Archon kills four of the Mutas, two of them still stuck in the back. I, I didn't realize there were only four left. So Arc Neon actually kills all of them, but unfortunately his economy's in tatters. He's got no probes left. But he's, but he's killed the top left hatchery, though. Who's actually ahead? I'm pretty sure Julia's still ahead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Julia. I mean, Julia's at 51 supply. Arc Neon's at 42. But... I'm pretty sure Julia's still ahead. Although it's hard to say, because I mean, you know, even though Arcanine doesn't have many probes, he's still on two base against two base. Which is good for Kratos. He killed all the Vitas. You know, now he's got so many cannons that he should be really safe. He's got a ridiculous number of cannons. And he's getting Storm, so he'll be safe against any kind of crazy Hydra attack. But it looks like Julia has switched into Lurkers. But there's three cannons at the front, though, as well as two cannons a little bit further back. So... I mean, he can kind of break down the forge, but that's about it. I guess, you know, he'll, he'll contain the Pearls for a little bit, but I don't think that matters that much at this point, right? Because Arcneon's not going to move out anytime soon anyway. He's got to rebuild his, his, uh, his pro count, he's got to rebuild his, uh, his army. Or I guess not rebuild, because he never had an army. He's got to build the, the army in the first place. What the hell? How is that not in range? What? Man, that's some BS right there. What? Are you serious? This is really not in range? I mean, this is gonna depower a bunch of stuff as well. It might depower this. Man, that's BS. That is BS. How is that there? How does that at least not detect it so you can kill it with the zealots? Ew, that's disgusting. Disgusting Zerg. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. Anyway, a couple of zealots gonna harass this top left base. Not gonna do anything. Oh man, I thought this gateway was safe for sure. Oh well, let's rebuild some of his main. No he hasn't, I thought he was. I thought he had. Does he have a robo yet? He's not making a robo. I don't know why he's not making- Oh, maybe he's making it here. Yeah, okay, he's making it at the Napa. That's actually reasonable. So you can get the Reavers later on as well. Uh, good times. Good stuff. So this is these two zealots are actually just blocking the transfer here. Although they're not really, because obviously the drones will just transfer through them. But, uh... Huh. Alright, so hopefully the observer's coming out soon. And looks like adding on the gateways as well. So his economy's kind of recovered, as we can see. Got some decent mining now. Uh, meanwhile, Julia, though, taking a fourth base here at the middle only. So he's taking all the left side bases, pretty standard. And, uh... And getting some Hydra Ups. Hydra Lurker Ups. So it looks like we're sort of gonna go to a normal mid-game here, somehow. After that crazy opening. Which I, I thought Kratos was dead, but somehow we actually, you know, with Julian not paying attention to those last couple of mutas, uh, managing to, managing to uh, somehow survive. Oh god. Oh god, look who dropped on the main. Fortunately, there's already like 12 cannons there. <laughs> yeah, see, this, this is so funny because, you know, Julia already forced the cannons by, uh, by going mutas, so the mineral line is actually safe. Uh, so he's actually just going to blow it on the gateways, but I don't think that's a huge issue unless... <clears throat> Unless uh, Arcana decides to suicide his army into the lurkers, but yeah, I think he's completely fine. Look at this. There's plenty of cannons everywhere. So it actually does almost nothing. See, I, I don't think that line of thought building makes sense. It's like, hey, I already forced a bunch of cannons in his main. Why would you go and drop him again? After, you know, you're, he's already got cannons there. I'm also not really sure what these two zealots are accomplishing here, but you know what? It's fine. So now there's only one lurker left at the front. Uh, Arcanine did use a few storms to get rid of it, but Julia's morphing a bunch more in the middle of the map. 87 supply against 82 or something like that, so pretty close in supply. Uh, that you know just generally shows that the Zerg's in a good position, also getting his queen's nest. So it looks like Julia actually going, thinking about going up to Hive already. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not for queens. And uh, that's interesting, because, you know, when you play ZVP, you can't stay on Hydro Lurk for a while if you want, but it looks like Julia's going for the relatively quick Hive deck here. Not going to stay on the lair level for too, too long. Meanwhile, Arcneon is going to go and uh, try and establish his third base here at the Pinot only. Although it's going to be uh, a little bit difficult with the entire Zerg army waiting at the top of this high ground platform to just charge down and kill everything. Although it's not the widest area to move in, though, and they can't really flank it, so... Uh, if there's enough storms here and there's good storms, I think Arcanine is okay. But look at this! I think he's trying to snipe the, the High Templar with the, uh, 
with the hydras though look at that he's, he's poking in it might suck the obs oh no he's going for the obs instead oh nice storms though but the observer did die so the lurkers are undetectable and what the hell is that why are these patrolling here what's going on is it like a fake is he just messing with his head pretending it's a drop anyway nice storm defense um lurkers still controlling the high ground Meanwhile, this is like really bugging and freaking me out right now. What the hell? Oh god. It's like now it's gonna be impossible for me to actually spot any kind of drops. Uh, and yes, as I said, it is gonna be a pretty quick hive here from Julia. Who's mining happily. Actually, not that many drones if we look. Barely any uh, drones at his, uh, his top left two bases. His natural is actually a little bit oversaturated. Should transfer some of those drones. His main has got, uh, you know, a little more than one per patch, so that's pretty nice. These overlords are just freaking me out though. Keep thinking there's lurker drops in the main again. Oh, apparently I'm dropping frames. Am I dropping frames? I'm dropping frames! I'm dropping them! It's alright. Well, I guess it's not alright, but I don't think there's anything I can do. I can't do it! I got nothing, guys! I got nothing. Alright, here we go. He's moving out. Oh, there's gonna be a counter in his third, though. I don't know why his army's all the way over there. This is really weird. Ooh, nice storm. But, again, I, I don't understand why he moved his army around the other side. Oh, is he just flanking? Is he just actually flanking this, uh, this top flight army? Yeah, this is a pretty crazy maneuver from Arc Neon. It looks like it might pay off, though, because he's getting a better angle by being on the high ground over here. But he's gonna get flanked by the reinforcements, so though, he's not careful. Coming out from, uh, from Julia's main, but it looks like he might be able to break through. Really getting all his high Templar picked off so easily, though. That seems to be, uh... Yeah, you know, what happened last game as well, just really not making the most of his High Templar lead, you know, A-moving everything, the High Templar running first, and he just gets sniped off before he can use all the storms, and it looks like, once again, he's reduced to only Dragoons, fighting an inefficient battle against, you know, a lot of speed and Hydras. Really should be more careful with those High Templars. Um, and now he's just going to lose the rest of his army, so, uh, it's hard on, not looking so hot here. His, his third Nexus is going to finish, but he doesn't really have that much able to defend it. Well, it looks like with some good goon control, he has actually managed to pick off most of the units here, but I really think he should try and figure out a way to just run home. Uh, just having them out on the map, they're eventually going to get picked off by these links, and it looks like these random zells have done something here. I don't know what's going on. What is up with that square in the map? It's a random, random hex there, but oh, it looks like the Dragoon is getting taken down. The units can kind of come out and try and save them, but not quite enough here for Archeon. I mean, look at it. He's barely gonna hold on to his third, but he, his army's getting whittled down here. And army trades and PVZ are almost always good for the Zerg. The Pearl's army is just so much more expensive and, and difficult to, to make. So, uh, so yeah, just by trading down, even if it's even, you know, seeing the even trades are slightly better for Pearl's, it's it's still in the long run gonna be better for Zerg. Um, so. Julia poking around with a few Hydras, he can't now be quite efficient since the unit numbers are low and try and pick off High Templar with some good micro uh, or random observers as you can see. Um, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's really just abusing these speedy Hydras to run around and snipe stuff, although uh, not quite enough stuff, he has to back off now. Although, oh, he's gonna snipe an observer? Nice! There are a couple more though in the back. And a nice storm at the top though. Two nice storms, but is he gonna get the last observer? He needs to focus it down? No! Doesn't get the last observer and now Arkneon has a chance to move up, but again, not quite enough units, he's got a few more units in the back. Is there another drop here? God, these patrolling overlords are just freaking me out. In the meantime, we have a Greater Spire on the way. Greater Spire, ladies and gents. Guardians are on the way. And yoink. Another High Templar. Man, this is like a really scrappy battle here. It's quite funny because Julia is technically on four bases, but he's just not really mining very much, so he doesn't have enough to go for the huge, you know, killing blow. He just, he's just like trying to be mega cost efficient and just poke around. Just be super annoying rather than, you know, actually go for the kill. I mean, he's getting another hatchery. I think he should just saturate his bases instead of expanding again. Because he's like not really making use of this base at all. Like, this should have just been six more drones, I think, instead of a hatchery. That'd be a lot more useful. Because um, having a bunch of hatcheries but no drones mining is not is not really increasing his income, is it? I don't think so. So, Julia continuing to take control of this. I think if he does some more drops now in the back of the, the main, it could be quite effective. I mean, even though there's a few cannons there, 
uh, he can start doing some bigger drops, and since most of the Protoss army will be focused on defending his third base and not have a grid thing, uh, a drop in the back would be really effective. It would take so long for the Protoss to walk all the way back there. And, uh, and he might not even see it coming for a while because this freaking Overlord is patrolling here constantly, just trolling him. Looks like Julio is just going to expand again to the 12. The Great Aspire is now finished. Don't know what he's making with it though. I haven't seen any mutas anywhere. Uh, is he going to like Guardian into the main? You can actually build Guardians and just like fly across the back here, which would be pretty awesome. Or I guess put a couple in the back of the natural. Either one works. It hasn't, hasn't really made anything though. Hmm. Oh! Looks like Dark Swarm. He's going to make some headway here. Uh, no more energy on the temps. And Arcanon's army just looks really small. How does he have 135 supply and like no units? I don't really understand. He's got some units moving across the middle. I don't really want to miss this engagement though. Uh, uh, looks like, again, going for a bit of a weird flank here. I think it probably would have been better just to keep his army together. Now he's just going to get a small group of units crushed in the middle. They're completely trapped now. I don't really see if, I don't really think it's a good idea. But he's coming in from the back. He's flanking the Zerg. Is it going to work? Not really. Oh, he's going to slide some lurkers though. And well, actually, this is being pretty efficient, but here's the problem is that there is a flood of reinforcements from Julia's base, so yeah, that didn't last very long. And once again, the Pearl is just throwing away units, which is not what you want to do. You really want to be conserving units, passing up a huge ball of Pearls, not doing this kind of thing. We, uh, still trying to break this man. Unable to make enough headway here. I would have thought by the time he got Swarm out, he could actually break this. This is probably going to be it. I don't think uh, Frost can actually hold this much longer with Dark Swarm here. Nice, nice Swarm there, but um, yeah, with the Lurkers and Lynx pushing in with Dark Swarm, I don't really see how Frost can keep holding this with almost no units. He keep, you know, he keeps bleeding army as well. So, Lurkers going to start taking everything down. Alright, dead. You're dead. Done. Alright, yeah, basically once this falls, there's probably no chance for Archeon. Um, he held on for a while, but it wasn't good enough. And the Nexus falls down. So it looks like Archeon is going to go for a huge counterattack somewhere. He's going to go to the top left, but there's two Lurkers there that have been there for forever. Well, he might go to the 12, but that's not really an important base at all. Um, yeah, Arcanon yeah, looks like he's basically going all in with his army again. It's like almost the same situation as last game, in fact. He just has lost all his economy, no third base, and he's all in with his army, and attacking a useless base. Seriously, if you're going all in with your army in these kinds of situations, like so many players for some reason just go for really useless expansions, you gotta, you gotta go for the jugular, man, you gotta go for the main. Oh, there's Ultras here as well already. Might be able to kill these at least. Doing some good micro, but... Arcneon is basically all wounds with this army. He's mined out his main, he's basically mined out his natural, he's got no third base anymore. He's distance mining it with like five probes. And uh, he's gotta do it with this army. He's moving out. He might kill this base at least, but again, it's not looking that very much mining there. And he might not kill it after all. Here come the units. Arcneon in serious trouble. Julia is looking good here. Dead Protoss is dead. Come on, done. Done. Done? Oh, he killed the space. How did he kill that? Did he just have one zealot there? That's interesting. Uh, okay. He's not leaving yet. He's pretty dead though. I'm waiting for the leave. I thought he would leave after he lost that army because he, he was uh, effectively all in with that army. But he's gonna hang on for a little bit. He's gonna he's gonna lose some more dudes. Hey, there's the GG. Julia, two O's Archeon, and we'll go on to the finals to face Napoleon. But don't worry, guys. It's not a ZBZ because Napoleon does race pick. It is in fact a TBZ. Finals.
Yes, that's good. That's right. Awesome. So we're going to take another break, and uh, I'll bring you guys the finals.